Okay, have you done seven? Seven is the next one that's available. So we circle seven to show it's prime. Now we're going to cross out everything that's divisible by seven. So we get seven, 14, which had already gone anyway, 21 had already gone, 28, 35, 42, uh, already gone, uh, 49, What's next? 56 had already gone. 63, 70, 77. Uh, what's after 77? 84, 91. Stop me if I do something wrong. Oh, you got. I'll just do it wrong anyway. 91, 98. Okay, so that's all the ones divisible by 7. Now, what other colours have I got? Orange, that would be nice. Okay, what's the next number that's available? Ah, 11. Oh, but look. We've now gone beyond the square root of 100. And we're trying to, we're trying to find all the primes up to 100. And remember, we only have to test for divisibility up to the square root of 100, which is 10. And so now we've gone beyond 10. We don't have to do any more. So we're already done. So now anything that's currently not crossed out must be prime. So let's find them. There's 11. I hope this is vaguely visible. 11, 13, 17, 19, 20, 21, 22, 57, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 89, 97. Right. So now if I also circle in orange the ones that we circled before, just so that they're make sure they're standing out enough. So those are the prime numbers. The circled ones are the prime numbers up to 100 because we've kind of sieved. I wish I had a sieve with me. I don't have a sieve with me. Have I got anything I can use to pretend is a sieve? No, I haven't. Okay. Well, imagine I'm holding a sieve and what I've done is I've sieved out all the numbers that are divisible by 2 and then I've sieved out all the numbers that are divisible by 3 and so on. So these are the ones that are left. Now, have a look for a second at that, that diagram of where the prime numbers are and see if you can see a pattern among them. Did you see a pattern? I hope the answer is no. You should not be able to see a pattern there because do you know what? There isn't a pattern and it's one of the big mysteries about life, the world and everything that although the notion of prime number is so straightforward and so, so um, well, so kind of innocent looking, it's not a complicated notion, but yet we just, there is, just doesn't seem to be a pattern to where the prime numbers pop up. They just can pop up all over the place and suddenly you can get lots of them very close together and sometimes you can't get them close together at all. Um, so it's one of the enduring problems, finding prime numbers. And um, one of the things that we'll talk about is how you look for, well maybe I'll talk about it now, how you look for more prime numbers. The biggest prime number, well I would have to look on Wikipedia to see what the current biggest known prime number is. In fact, you know what, I'm going to do that now. And why don't you do that now as well? Let's all go and look on Wikipedia to see what is currently the biggest prime number that's known. Did you find it? I found on Wikipedia that the currently largest known prime number is 2 to the power of 4, 43,112,609 minus 1, which apparently has around 13, 13 million digits? Or 13, yeah, something. Let's go and have another look. It has, 
apparently around 13, around 13 million digits. So one very common way of finding, looking for prime numbers, is to raise two to a very large already known prime number, which apparently this is, and then subtract one, because that will often sometimes turn out to be prime. And those ones are called the Mersenne. Primes, where you raise two to a, another prime number and take away one. So, for example, if we raise two to the power of two and take away one, we'll get three, which is prime. Um, so, two to the power of two take away one is three, which is prime. Two to the power of three take away one. Well, two times two times two is eight. If we take away one, we'll get seven, which is prime. What about 2 to the power of 5? Take away 1. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. If we take away 1, we get 31, and that's prime. What about 2 to the power of 6? Take away 1. 2 to the power of 6, take away 1, is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. If we take away 1 from 64, we'll get 63. Ah, oh, that's not prime. So this method doesn't always work. There is no fail-safe method of predicting when a number is going to be prime. You just start with something that is, is sort of likely, and these happen to be likely. So then what do you do once you've, once you've raised it to your very large power and taken away one? Well, then you just have to sit there and try and factorize it, basically. And the way this is done these days is usually that a huge network of people around the world with, with computers uh, club together and, and all join in sharing their computer power to try and work it out because factorizing numbers takes a really, really long time. Um, and this number, if you saw the Wikipedia article, you see that this number was found uh, back in 2008. Um, well, what we'll do next is we'll show that there are an infinite number of primes. So although this is the biggest prime that we know at the moment, it definitely isn't the biggest prime altogether because there, there really is an infinite number of primes and so we will keep finding more primes. It just, it's just takes a long time because the currently biggest known ones are really, really huge. And there are books which just consist of all the known prime numbers written out, which takes a really long time. And um, Well, I've never seen that book. 